Good morning, friends, wherever you are, and welcome to today's Cichlids and Coffee live stream. I am glad you are here. I hope you're having a cup of coffee or whatever your favorite beverage might be, wherever you might be. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so, how are you today? I hope you're doing well. And it's a beautiful Saturday here in, uh, in Nashville, Tennessee. Nice, clear blue skies. And I might even try and sneak in a bike ride, if you can believe that, in February. So uh, let me get a sound check. How are we doing on the, uh, on the audio visual? How's the AV, folks? Let me know how it looks and how it sounds so I know we're in good shape. While I'm waiting for that, let's, uh, let's do some shout outs here. Hello, Vibes Aquatics, one of my moderators. Moderators help keep the, uh, help keep the live stream family friendly. So <laughs> I have a, um, a tremendous video for, well, tremendous. I mean, I have a video for you that I put together, but I, I really like it. And it's, um, it's going to profile a lot of fish. And I think uh, you're going to find it very interesting. So stay tuned for that in, uh, in today's uh, Fish Profile special live stream. And Vibes Aquatics in the house. Angelo. Hey, Angelo. Good morning to you, my friend. And Paul Newman is in the house. The Fish Ranch is here. Wrangling and rounding up those fish. Michael is in the house. Lotinero. Good morning to you, my friend. Tony Punch, Tony Punch is here, Melissa is here, Melissa Steves, good morning everyone, a little while since I caught the live, I'm glad you're here Melissa, I'm glad you could make it, peas and haps forever, how are you my friend, and let's z-zip in the house, and let's see, Jared Williams is here, hey Jared, and thank you for making the live stream, Cat Sailor is here, hey Cat. hey Denny, and hey Mary, how are you Mary? I know Dennis is there watching with Mary. So hello to you, Mary. And let's see here. Raul is in the house. Hey, Joe. Good to see you, my friend. Luke's Aquatics is here. Mr. Kev Inc. J2002. <laughs> All right. Country strong and free. Hello, my friend. Glad to see you. Thank you for watching my last video. I did notice your comment. Cichlid Kings, another moderator. How are you, buddy? CPL Jager, good afternoon from Memphis. Hey, you're, uh, you're just uh, down the road, my friend. Just down the road. Stay safe out there in Memphis. Doug in the house, just poured a fresh cup of coffee. There you go. Andy Tishar, Tisher, sure, is it Tisher? Is the T silent, Andy? Looking forward to seeing some of those majestic beasts. You're going to see a lot of them, along with some information on each one. AV is perfect. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate that. Angelo, Arbaglio. Okay. Looks like we're, uh, we've got some good AV. Thank you, Raul. And thank you, Pete the Greek. <laughs> Love these names on, on, on uh, YouTube. All right. Luke's Aquatics, Scuba Steve's O's Aquatics. Love these names. Just love these names. And let's see here. Country Strong and Free going to get some ice cream. Be right back. <laughs> okay, good. Ice cream. Start your day off with some ice cream. Hey, you know what? It's Saturday. Why not, right? Hey, Jordan. Haven't seen you in a while, Jordan. Were you here last week? Hey, I'm glad, glad to see you. Jordan LaBelle in the house. Good morning to you. So um, let's go ahead and uh, I can spend another, another 15 minutes here saying hello to everybody, which I love doing. Hey, Jerry, good to see you here in the house in Arizona. And uh, I'm sure it's nice and warm where you are. It got real cold yesterday, got in the 30s, but it's warming up today and I am happy because of it. Let's go ahead and... Uh, officially start the stream what do you say if you're new to this channel uh, we are this close 
this close to 50,000 subscribers. So be sure to hit that uh, subscribe button and the thumbs up and the notification bell so you'll know when I'm going live. It's usually Saturdays, but sometimes I'll sneak one in during the week. And a big shout out to my uh, Patreon supporters. And here they are. And these are what I call the founding members of the Patreon program, the, um, the Garage Gang. Great way to support the channel on a monthly basis. Starts for as little as $3 a month. Other ways to support the channel, of course, is to subscribe and uh, also visit Amazon using my Amazon link, Amazon slash shop slash Ben Ochart. And also, uh, you can pick up swag like coffee cups, T-shirts, and sweatshirts at uh, my Teespring store. So that's noted under the banner. If you want, if you you visit the channel on a um, laptop, you'll see underneath the banner the link to the Teespring store. So uh, just as a little preview, I have uh, I received this item. And you know, like that movie, what was it, Christmas Story? What's in the box? What's in the box? I am very excited about what's in that box. Can you guess what's in that box? First person that guesses, that gives me a correct guess of what is in that box is going to get some Sarah food. I'm going to send you some Sarah food, some sample packets, if you can guess what's in that box. And uh, I'm very excited about what's in that box. I'm going to be doing a full review of what's in that box. And so watch for that. I'm going to have to open it upstairs. And here's the only clue you're going to get because it's too heavy to carry downstairs. So I'm going to open it upstairs and bring it down here uh, in parts and uh, go from there. So there you go. That's the only clue you're going to get. Moderators, please watch for uh, anyone who makes a guess. And uh, if they guess correctly, I'll send them some food. An FX6, FX2, nope, 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 nope. Tony, fish, nope, wouldn't let fish sit around. I'd be opening that up immediately and getting them acclimated. So while you folks are guessing, uh, we're not going to be doing a, uh, a Shaq's Choice today. Because what I'm going to be showing you in the profile video is really going to be 99% fish from the Cichlid Shack in Tempe, Arizona. So keep that in mind as we go through this, uh, this fish profile uh, special video that I put together for you. So... <clears throat> Large fish, no. Filter and pump, no. Low to discus, no. <laughs> new haps, FX2. Oh, my goodness. A box of new Rockscape. Man, these are great guesses. I would love to have any of those things. A sump, a 3D background, new computer desk, a cram co-op filter. Uh, new Whoa, Ronald. Ronald, Ronald, Ronald. Ronald, buddy, send me your uh, mailing address to ben.o.cichlid, ben.o.cichlid at gmail.com, Ronald. I'm going to send you some Sarah fish food. Yes, I have a very high-tech, several thousand watt generator that was sent to me, and I can run the entire fish room and run an extension cord to the refrigerator and it will run everything in the event of a uh, blackout so uh get me your address ronald no not a six pack of beer <laughs> uh oh jerry can i see a note do you have do you have uh, a note from janice that uh Jerry's Fish Room in the House, a moderator like Salient Aquatics and Cichlid Kings and, and Denny. Dennis Rudell. So uh, when this generator, this generator uh, will be 
unboxed and reviewed within the next week. I have to send a copy of the video to the generator manufacturer and they will uh, sign off on, that they liked the video and then we will go ahead and go forward with publishing it. So uh, very, very excited, very, very excited. So um, a Beach Attic, I'm loving the light on your tank. Is it a marine light? I have uh, several lights on the tank behind me, and that is a, um, there's, there's uh, a light made by a company called A Best Fish, all one word, A Best Fish, and it is a app-controlled uh, RGB light that uh, I can control from anywhere, and, and then behind that, I think I either have, a, I think I have a couple, I think it's, it might be one Hyger and one JC and P light. And if you go underneath any one of my videos, you'll see all of the lights that I use and including the newest one that was just added to the mix, which is the, uh, that easy LED full spectrum plant light from, um, from my friends over at the aquarium co-op. So if you go underneath my videos, you'll see uh, the, the names and descriptions of the lights that I use, but also links uh, where you can get them, excuse me, either from the manufacturer or from, the, um, from my Amazon store. All right, let's see here. Jerry says he has a new nano project going, and it looks like he's got some CO2. Somebody gave me some advice, Jerry, and you can look into this. Somebody said that I should, uh, I should add a lot more plants to that 55 gallon before I consider firing up the CO2. So um, I'm going to look into that, and uh, because I don't know, maybe CO2 just isn't required when you have a lightly planted versus a heavily planted tank. So uh, again, I'm going to be looking. I'm going to be looking into that. I do have the CO2 system from the aquarium co-op. All right, Peggy in the house. Hello, Peggy. And Raul Sanchez has joined us. And let's see here. Love that name, by the way, Beach Addict. I am also, having grown up in Southern California, I am a beach addict, and I do miss, I miss my beaches. Scruffy City Aquatics. <laughs> what is Scruffy City? Is that a... Is that the nickname of a particular uh, city? All right. No, not a UV light, Brian. And welcome, Brian Park, to the live stream. Robert Egan is here as well. So let's go ahead and get this video. Let's get this video rolling. And uh, it's a little longer than videos I normally do. And it is going to be released as a standalone video. But you folks... Uh, you folks are special, so you get stuff ahead of everybody else. So let's go ahead and play this fish a profile video. And the fish profile video is going to segue right into a lap of the fish room. So you're going to get a profile of some of the bigger beasts along with info on each one, okay? What a profile means, right? And a lap of the fish room. My weekly lap of the fish room is at the tail end of this, of this video. So I hope you enjoy it. Go ahead and comment in the chat as you go along. I hope I haven't missed any super chats. Let me check. Super chats are ways of throwing, throwing money at the, uh, why do I always think of a pole dancer? I don't know, maybe I am just, maybe I'm just a little sick. But let me go ahead and play this video. Here we go. Let's start off this fish profile with the Vieja cichlid. And uh, this is a fish I grew out from a small, small little guy. And uh, he's currently got to be pushing around 10 inches. And often referred to as a Vieja cispillum. Cispillum and Vieja Melanora, even though it is going through a bit of a reclassification after some recent uh, DNA uh, evaluations. 
They can be aggressive, and I found them to be most aggressive with their own kind, even though I've seen them living pretty peacefully in large groups. But uh, this, uh, this fish likes vegetables and some protein in the diet, prefers slow-moving water, and a pH of 6 to 8, and temperature between 70 and 82. You're going to need a big tank for this fish. They can get up to a foot, and so uh, keep that in mind if you're going to be picking one up. Certainly one of my favorites. Love the markings of the body. And even the temperament, this one just kind of lumbers around, doesn't really bother anybody. Gets challenged from time to time, like you'll see the uh, Salvini uh, try and assert herself around around this fish, but it doesn't really go anywhere. And uh, certainly one of, one of my favorites. This, uh, this vieja, like most of, it, of the fish you're going to see today, was picked up from the, uh, from the cichlid shack and has really blossomed into into a big beast and still has a little growing to do like I said they can get up to up to a foot they're up they're locally bred these days right but uh, originally they come from central Central America and you know from Mexico to Central America is where you'll find this vieja talk about the, uh, the Salvini, sometimes referred to as Tabasco or Grijalva. I think scientific name for this one is, is Trichromus Salvini, and you'll find them from Mexico to Honduras, considered a Central American cichlid. Can be very aggressive with its own kind, but will calm down, will calm down in a tank with bigger fish or with what are called dither fish that'll distract it. And likes a pH of 6 to 8. Can get up to 6 inches. So will not be the biggest fish in this tank for sure. And likes a temperature between 70 and 82. Actually prefers hard water. Is considered a carnivore. And uh, actually I think it's classified as an omnivore. But does prefer and love uh, protein. All the fish in this tank get a diet of, uh, of protein. But also a mix of of vegetables is included with their diet. The females have that prominent red belly and you'll see under the right light some blue specks on the top of the body that just make this fish absolutely beautiful. fish that you don't see too often is the chocolate cichlid, also referred to as the emerald cichlid. I'll try and get my uh, my mouth around the scientific uh, Hypsilicara temporalis, and that is the, uh, the official name of this, the scientific name. They are a South American fish that can get as big as 12 inches and uh, can get pretty, pretty beefy, but uh, are considered relatively calm or peaceful overall and they like 76 to 86 degrees in temperature a pH of 5 to 7 they're considered an herbivore and so the vegetables I include in the diet of this tank are important but they will eat protein of course they can be found mostly in the uh, slow deep waters of the Amazon basin. So again, a lot of strong water flow, uh, you know, and circulation is usually not recommended. When you see them uh, change based on their attitude, they can change their colors. It becomes really, really obvious why they're called an emerald cichlid. Thank you. 
let's talk about the Oscars. I have uh, Red Tiger Oscars, both a usual Red Tiger and also an albino Red Tiger. And this one is scientifically referred to as Astronotus oscillatus. And interestingly enough, can also be found under the cloud, under the name Water Dog. And uh, primarily because of just the way they wiggle when they get excited or interact with you. Uh, people do get very, very attached to these fish. They can grow um, all the way up to about uh, 8 to 16 inches in captivity and can last 20 years, lifespan of about 20 years. They can grow up to 12 inches in a year. So you, if you buy one, you really have to have the right size tank or you're going to find yourself having to rehome a fish that you've become very attached to. They're uh, South American, uh, again found in the Amazon basin, and unfortunately they are susceptible to what is called hole-in-the-head disease. So um, really make sure you're giving them a, um, the right kind of, uh, of diet and, uh, and very clean water conditions. Let's go over to the um, African cichlids. And boy, I could spend all day profiling fish in this tank, but I'm gonna concentrate on just a few of them. And it, perhaps in a different video, I'll get back to some other ones that are not included in this, uh, in this fish profile video. But I'm gonna start with the obvious giant of this aquarium, and that is the uh, the Malawi trout, the Champsochromus Carulius. Carulius. <laughs> Boy, I'm probably destroying these scientific names. But this trout that you see there in the very middle, and he'll he'll work his way this way. There he is. And he, he can get over 13 inches. And uh, this one's got to be pushing, um, I don't know, maybe maybe eight to nine inches right now, maybe even longer from a nose to tail. They tend to hang out in the middle of Lake Malawi and are uh, what are referred to as pursuit uh, predators. I mean, they, they, they're built for speed and they really just, just overrun uh, fish that can fit in its mouth. Like all of the fish in this tank, he, he likes a pH of 7.5 to 8.5, a hard water fish that is considered aggressive among its own kind, certainly being mostly solitary in Lake Malawi. But really, I have found them to be kind of big and mellow, a lot like the Bucochromis, uh, Notatania, and the uh, Sand Divers. Uh, it just kind of lumbers around and doesn't really get into it with anybody. And uh, they are an open water fish, so you're going to need a tank with not much decor and a lot of swim room. So just keep that in mind. Minimum of six feet across. Of course, this tank is seven feet across and uh, over two feet from front to back. So he's got a lot of room in this 300 gallon. As a pursuit predator, he is going to like a lot of protein in the diet. So keep that in mind. Provide him with good high quality protein and you'll end up with a what is called a centerpiece fish that is just going to be uh, draw, jaw dropping. Let's talk about a type of fish called Nimbochromus. And in this case, you see a Nimbochromus living stone eye. This is an ambush predator. And the Nimbochromus have a very interesting uh, habit of being able to blend in with that pattern. And they blend in with, uh, with patches of Vallis nearum. Uh, there, there are actually plants in Lake Malawi. Some people say there are not, but there are patches of plants and uh, they, they'll hang out there and uh, they'll, in the case of the living stone eye, will act dead, will lay on its side. Uh, he has a nickname among the people of Malawi, a cal caligon, which, which is, uh, translates to sleeper, where he lays there on his side and the fish come around to check out the dead fish and boom, they're gone. This is the cousin, Nimbochromus venusus, also gets up to about 10 inches and can be anywhere from the shoreline to deep water and does require protein. These fish require protein in the diet. They are considered pescivore. In other words, they eat other fish. You don't need to feed them live fish in your aquarium. Just give them a good quality protein diet. 
something like extreme um, you know, extremes good north fin uh, Piscean energetics those are all good good choices for a high protein diet fish i do include some vegetables just to keep their digestive tract uh, clean and i also sometimes will skip a meal just to let them clean out their digestive tract to avoid malawi bloat this is the fusco which i featured in my last video and just one of my favorite lake malawi fish and quite possibly my favorite nimbochromis even though I do like the linny quite a bit, but that's a very hard to get fish. This fish tends to uh, be like the others. Goes anywhere from shoreline to deep water. And I just love the markings on the fish from the egg spots on the anal fin to the sort of burnt brown to red that can uh, appear in the body at times. I had one many years ago that had a lot of red in the body and that was just a, a beautiful specimen. Again, it'll get to 10 inches and uh, would be aggressive with other other Fuscos, but I don't really uh, I don't really find that they get into it too much with the cousins, the other Nimbochromuses in the tank. There have been exceptions. I've had Venusas in the past that have been very, very aggressive. Nimbochromus fuscotoniatus. <laughs> Let's talk about the uh, the Rostratus a little bit. Uh, this is the sand diver, and as the name of, as the name suggests, they will disappear completely into the sand. And when you're uh, when you're transferring fish or cleaning out or you know transferring a tank, you got to really check with your fingers and make sure that you haven't missed a sand diver that's that's disappeared entirely. They are at lake-wide distribution in Lake Malawi, can get from 11 to as big as 16 inches. So this fish can actually end up being comparable in size to the trout, but of course with a lot more, a lot more girth, a lot more weight and size. Again, prefer 74 to 84 degrees, uh, 7.4 to 8.4 pH, a hard water fish, considered a relatively peaceful omnivore. And, uh, but can be aggressive with his own kind and certainly if in a you know in breeding but i have found them to be just a just a big goofy fish a beautiful fish that just likes to kind of hang out and if you ever go after them with a net you'll see what i mean how fast they can actually get completely buried maybe only have their eye or one fin sticking out of out of the uh out of the sand i actually put a video a video out a while back on him and uh, it was pretty funny how he was disappearing over and over again this is one of the reasons why you need to have good substrate that doesn't have any sharp edges because when they dive in of course they can scrape up their eyes if you have any kind of substrate that has sharp edges this is an oddball fish and uh, and commonly referred to as the Malawi hawk Scientific name Aristochromus Christii. Aristochromus Christii. Aristo because he looks down. So he was aristocratic. <laughs> he is in lake wide distribution, considered mildly aggressive, can get up to 14 inches. And like the other fish in this tank, like 78 to 84 degrees, 7.4 to 8.4 pH, and is a hard water fish kind of an oddball looking fish and will loom over other fish and look sideways will actually turn his body so that his eye is pointed down and then will drop on the fish a sort of a death from above attack similar to the eye biter which uses its uh, thin body to sort of disguise itself as it goes directly over a fish and then drops down to ambush him. Another unusual fish I have in this tank is this Malawi gar. I like him because he doesn't look like every other fish in the world. Look at the lips on him. And he is built and designed to turn his body sideways and get between rocks to eat a small fry, usually mabuna fry. 
So he is what you would call a omnivore. He will eat vegetables as well. He can be mildly aggressive, even though I have found this one to be uh, to be just a just kind of a water puppy. They are in lakewide distribution and can get as big as 14 inches. So again, with all the fish I'm covering here, you're going to need a, a big tank. Except maybe that Salvini, you could probably get away with a 75 gallon. Like the other fish, you like 74 to 84 degrees Fahrenheit, 7.4 to 8.4 pH in a hard water tank. And I love him just because he's so unusual looking. There are other fish in this tank I'd like to go ahead and talk about, but I don't want to have a, a two hour video. But certainly the Bucachromas is the. Um, you know, this, this incredible survivor here, this autopharynx tetrastigma. Several of the fish in here I could do profiles on. But um, so many fish and so little time. <laughs> but that's it for my, for my fish uh, profiles. Let's go ahead and take a lap of the fish room since we're already moving around anyway. And as you can see, the 90 gallon is looking good. Man, that uh, that green tear is just about ready to go over to the to the 300. I mean, to the 210 gallon. Geophagus looking spectacular. The red shoulder has stopped picking on the uh, red spotted gold severum, and that's good. It's been real hard for me to find more of these silver dollars. I keep looking and going to different shops. I don't see them, but I definitely want to add some. They have done really well in this tank. They have these nice little specks on their body. Uh, bright, bright silver specks. They're just really, really a pretty fish. Very peaceful. Very nice temperament. There's the red shoulder. There's that beautiful uh, green tear. I believe this is called a uh, true or real green tear as opposed to the gold psalm, the one that has the gold orange on the tail, which is a beautiful fish. But I think this white rimmed one is considered the uh, true green tear. There's that uh, beautiful electric blue Akara up there. This uh, Hecali, AC Hecali has been getting uh, much more assertive recently and really aggressive in his eating. I really like what I'm seeing with all of the fish in this aquarium. What fish would you add to this aquarium if there was a fish that you could add, considering that the green tear will probably go out? And let's say I have silver dollars in here, geos. What other fish would you uh, would you add to this 90 gallon? Go ahead and let me know in the uh, in the chat or in the comments if you're watching this uh, this live stream on the replay. Because I would like to add some more fish to this tank. Just want to make sure I get the right tank mates in here. Maybe some redhead tapahos. Certainly, uh, maybe three or four more silver dollars. over to the uh, planted aquarium it's doing very very well and uh, you can see the plants the plants are surviving which for me is a uh, is an incredible victory <laughs> I haven't used any glue or anything I've just simply wedged the Anubius in the driftwood in the natural crevices of the driftwood and it seems to be holding. I'm hoping those roots will work their way around and attach themselves to the wood or maybe even the uh, rock that's below it. It'll make uh, servicing and cleaning the tank pretty interesting, but that's okay. Here's my oddball. I've heard them called a twig catfish, an armored catfish, a whiptail catfish. I've seen them uh, described by various names. 
but he is definitely my uh, my oddball fish. I've added a um, small albino pleco to this aquarium. So together with that pleco and a few Cory cats, that's the cleanup crew. I am giving this tank water changes, 20-30% water changes, only because in watching that MD fish keeper over in the UK, I believe he was he was uh, talking about how it's it's actually good for the plants to do water changes. So um, that was a little bit surprising to me, but um, I take that guy's word for it. He seems to really know his way around plants, and the plants do seem to be doing well. I am using the Easy Green liquid, and I do have some root tabs in the substrate around the plants. I've continued to harvest some of the um, water sprite from the 20 gallon tall you'll see it in a minute and it's uh, and adding it to both this tank and also to the uh, to the beta tank I've finally been able to keep uh, some of the rummy noses and some of the neon tetras alive and thriving those were two fish that for a long time I had trouble with and I think it's because the aquarium has finally become very very stable and mature and so it's not going through any kind of odd pH fluctuations or anything like that plus having plants in the tank I think is also helping to uh, remove remove uh, remove ammonia and nitrate and uh, and of course, they add oxygen to the aquarium. Let's work our way around the 90 gallon and over here to this 29 and I'll show you the other uh, five I have five neons that are actually doing well these were picked up at a local pet smart as opposed to the other five which were picked up at a local fish store these are doing well and will be added to that 55 gallon so I'll have a total of 10 neon tetras in there which I think will be great will look will look really really good they tend to hang out down there I don't th don't think they like the strong current of the internal filter so they kind of hang out down there to be out of the way of the whereas the guppies that I have in this tank they like they actually play in the current and when I'm doing water changes they'll get right in front of the hose get right into the water flow I have three males in here and I've added some females so things have gotten a little bit more exciting for the guppies love the colors on these guppies and all of the guppies will end up in the 20 gallon tall live bear tank where I'll be adding more plants I'll be using that live bear tank as a uh, as a place to grow and harvest plants so with all the plant cover the uh, the fry will have a better chance of surviving but you can see all the fish in this tank are doing fine as well as a, a good number of uh, of those pagoda snails that somehow survived when the tank went up over 90 degrees when I had the heater malfunction hopefully those guys will make it they're not showing any sign of distress so fingers crossed that I can transfer all five of those neons over. He 
Here's that 20 gallon rimless tank. One of the uh, several tanks I have from glass cages. The 300, the 210, and the 90 are all from glass cages here in Dixon, Tennessee. But I'm really liking the way this tank is doing. The platies are looking great. The Mickey Mouse platies. And they keep uh, they keep having offspring. I have about three females in here for each male. And uh, they never stop. If you look close, if you can see the detail, this tank is due for a cleaning. But if you look at the detail here, you'll, you'll see babies hanging around. You'll see fry. There's probably about, uh, I'd imagine, half a dozen, maybe ten fry in there right now, hiding in the plants, under the wood, underneath that bubbler strip at the very back. There's some right there, right over that that cave from uh, underwater galleries. That's a real piece of wood in there with a little bit of anubius on it. Everything else is water sprite that is actually in the substrate. And as soon as it shoots off any kind of root, I go ahead and clip it and transfer the uh, cutting to either the beta tank or the 55 gallon. But this tank is doing well. I do have a couple quarries in here. I was thinking of when the quarries put on size, maybe move them over to the 55, but I think I'm just going to buy more quarries. They do like to be in groups, and I do like having a cleanup crew in this tank. Love the yellow and orange on these guys, and also the dark blue on the other platies. The smaller ones you see were born in this tank and it was really really cute to watch the uh, the little Mickey Mouse start to form up on the back of their bodies. In the real small fry there's a real dark one running around so I'm thinking that um, that maybe one of the a darker platies, one of those emerald colored ones actually had some fry as well. Here's my little Lyretail lire Molly harem one male and two females the aquarium co-op heater that you see in there is a 50 watt whereas the other heaters that you've seen are 100 watt sounds like a bit of an overkill for a small a small tank like this I think it's about I don't know maybe five gallons but uh, it was really hard for me to keep it warm when the temperature went down Here's the beta duplex and this red, vel red velvet, I just call them red, is doing exceptionally well. I love the way his tail just becomes um, transparent as you get to the, to the end of it. The other side you have uh, candy, my candy colored betta, and from time to time they get right up against the divider and face off, and I think it keeps them it keeps them really uh, interested and active, and and it's been my my limited experience with betta that that kind of stimulation is not necessarily a bad thing. You can see. Uh, Red Velvet getting all fired up there. You can sense that Candy's on the other side. Flaring out those gills. Yeah, he's a real tough guy. Eventually, I'd like to fill this tank up with live plants, but for now, just to give them a lot of places to go in and out of, and in some cases rest. They kind of go in and rest. I'm going to leave the uh, artificial plants in there, but I am continuing to add some of the water sprite as I bring over clippings. And as you can see, it's dropping some nice roots, so it's, uh, it's liking the water. There is a Kuliluch in this aquarium somewhere. 
He has buried himself, and I am hoping he is still alive. Uh, this tank is scheduled for a cleaning today, so I'm going to dig around, just make sure that Cooley Looch is in there. I'd like to add two or three more Cooley Looches. I know they like to hang out together. So this tank is going to get a good cleaning today, and hopefully I'll find that Cooley Looch alive and well on the right side. And as soon as I can find a place that offers them, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pick up maybe three or four more of them and, and drop them in here. They are good tank mates for betta fish since they tend to hang around the bottom and just stay out of the way of the betta. If you know of any other good tank mates for betta fish, please share them in the comments below. If you're watching the replay or in the chat, I'd be curious to uh, hear what you think are good, uh, good tank mates. So that's it for the uh, for the fish profile and the uh, lap of the uh, fish room. I hope you enjoyed it. Certainly share your comments your comments below and uh, keep in mind that the channel is like one hair away from uh, 50,000 subscribers. So uh, if you haven't already done so, please uh, hit that subscribe and the and the notification bell and uh, a thumbs up all that good stuff and let's uh, let's get this channel rocking and rolling up over 50,000 subscribers and that'll be an awesome milestone and then we'll and then we'll, we'll take the next challenge which will be I guess 100,000 all right let's go ahead and get back get back to the live stream thank you so much for watching this I think I said, I think I said Cooley Looch. Should be Cooley Loach like a coach. So uh, <laughs> I used to call my 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 uh, clown Loaches. I used to call them clown Looches. <laughs> it is it is Loach like a coach. So Cooley Loaches, and I hope to get some of those for that beta tank. If you can think of any other fish that can go in there. Let me know. I am curious what would be good tank mates for a betta fish. A friend of mine tried some quarries. They got nipped up a bit. So I don't know if quarries uh, would be a good idea. Uh, maybe a pleco. Maybe I've got 30, which I didn't show in the video, by the way. I've got about 30 baby plecos. There's a couple big ones in there, too. The mom and pop. The, the uh, dad is... Um, I, I had a snowball in there, and it looks like the, the dad is a... Is a is a bristle nose or a bushy nose and he's got some big big uh comes out of the out of the, the uh out of the, the wood there's a hole in the wood that he lives in and he comes out occasionally he's got just massive bristles on his nose very amazing fish but i'll leave him and a couple of females in there and let him keep making little uh little plecos but uh, maybe i'll put a pleco with the betta maybe that might work so uh hope you enjoyed that it was a bit longer than what I normally will, would show on a live stream, but uh, it looks like most of you hung in there. So uh, thank you for that. I will be releasing it as a, st as a standalone video. And when I release it as a standalone video, what I'll do is I'll include the uh, common and the scientific name uh, underneath each one of the fish. So if you're interested in doing a little more research on the fish, uh, you'll have both the common and scientific names. The um, I went to Seriously Fish. I went to uh, uh, some of the descriptions under the fish at Imperial Tropicals. I went to uh, uh, several several web pages on the internet. You know, I just kind of kind of searched around to get all the data and, of course, some of the information I knew already. So it was uh, it was fun. It's always fun, and one of the reasons I love doing. Uh, profiles a little bit uh, of a selfish reason is it, it helps me to learn more more about the fish while i was doing some research i came across what is called a blue blue oscar have you heard or seen a blue oscar i used to have a blue vieja but it was so uh, aggressive i had to rehome him but uh, blue oscar sounds beautiful I, i'd love to see one sometime in person 
a blue Oscar. So let's take a look at some of your uh, your comments. Let's see here, Leslie, lurking Leslie. <laughs> Do not call Leslie lurking Leslie. Do not call her that. So. <laughs> That'll make sure everybody calls you Lurking Leslie. So let's see here. Uh, Leslie the Lurker. No, don't call her Leslie the Lurker. Ronald is I'm moving to PA this year. Retired plumber buying a house on installing floor drains, a generator, mixing valve for water. Wow, that could be great. It could be great. Yeah, if, you could, if you're like a, a, a dedicated fish keeper and you build a house from scratch, I mean, the kind of things you would do, right? You know, have... Uh, you know, have outlets near every tank. I mean, it'd be, you know, lots of, lots of electrical, uh, you know, high amperage everywhere, you know, so you'd be, it'd be quite a project. In building out this fish room, I had to uh, deal with things like, you know, replace the ceiling, lighting, new, new hot water tank, added a sink, uh, increased the amperage and outlets, uh, quadrupled them, and uh, maybe more, maybe more than quadrupled. So it's, uh, it, you know, it's got to be a, it's got to be a, uh, you know, something. It's a big project. It's got to be a, a, just a, something you do out of, out of a love for the hobby. Black Severum, Saints Dust Aquariums. Black Severum. Haven't seen a Black Severum. Uh, I'll keep my eye out. I'll keep my eye out. I have found that the Severums can be a bit on the aggressive side, and maybe I don't have enough of them. Maybe they need more numbers, like the the way the African cichlids do. But uh, boy, when they when they want to do another Severum in, they they really stick to it, and uh, it can be rough. It can be really rough. Country strong and free. That's how I plant my Anubias. You must be talking about just wedging them in natural crevices. I like that a little bit more than putting in the uh, super glue gel. But super glue um, gel, be sure it's the gel, and that that works fine. You can also use things like uh, fish line, uh, you know, zip ties. If if you can hide them, you know, you can also use weights. You know, kind of use use fish line to a small weight or a small rock, and uh, you know, then then hide the bottom of it somewhere. So lot, lots of ways to work with Anubius. Uh, they're kind of a very cool plant in that they're uh, they don't need to be in the substrate and uh but very very cool so let's see here let's take a look at your comments and your questions salient aquatic having heater issues yeah, this time of year, you know, we're all uh, we're all running our heaters to the maximum, and so you really got to stay on top of it. Be checking your thermometers, make sure those heaters are on point, and uh, ideally run them through uh, controllers. Salient Aquatics. It looks like he's been really busy with his uh, artwork here. <laughs> Man, that's got to take a lot of work, Salient. That's a lot of a lot of clicks to get that artwork. Uh, in the in the uh, comment section there. Now, uh, can AJ DK Ben? I see you got the Limophilia sessi in the community tank. Not sure what fish is that. What fish are you referring to? I am not familiar with that name. Enlighten me. Always be learning. <laughs> so, tell me what fish you're referring to. So let's see here. We got into a little bit of a discussion about Puerto Rico. Yes, my roots are, my family's roots are in Puerto Rico. They're Spaniards, Spaniards by, by, by bloodline, but, uh, and came to California via New York, as so many Puerto Ricans do. But uh, we've all spread to the four corners of the world now. Trey Cole in the house. Ben, my mom wanted a new tank, so I set her up a 15-gallon with a beautiful blue betta paired with six ember tetras, and it's going very well. Oh, that's awesome. Very cool. Embers are a little small, and uh, but I don't know. Is, would, would a betta pursue? Is a betta a, a pescador? Would he, would he pursue another fish and, and eat them? I don't know. Maybe not, but 
Embers are very cool. I think the main thing is you want them to, you want them to be fast, right? Because uh, beta, of course, are not very, very fast with all that finage. And you certainly want, uh, you want them to hang around in a different range of the aquarium. Beta, of course, hanging out mostly on top. I think they go to the bottom and rest sometimes, but they're mostly at the top. And uh, I have one little ember, one ember in that 55 gallon and uh, teeny little guy, you know, you'd probably call him a nano fish and isn't going to get much, much bigger than he is now. The Buenos Aires uh, tetras are going to be two to three times bigger than that uh, little ember. Hopefully they won't pick on him. But yeah, that sounds like a real uh, beautiful setup, Trey. I'm sure your mom is very, uh, very grateful. Mr. Kevin uh, J, 20, 2002. Yes, in Spanish, a V is a B. Vieja. Vieja is the right pronunciation. Leslie Perry, my old beta killed everything I put in the tank. Wow. Okay. There you go. Well, some bettas have a lot of attitude. What can you say? On the one hand, I feel bad that happened. On the other hand, man, that better has got some swag. That's one, uh, that's one hard better right there. So uh, probably lasted you a long time. Had a lot of grit. Love that name, Carlos Munoz, live, love, laugh. Very nice. Very nice name, sir. Cichlid Kings, my daughter has a 10-gallon beta tank with three neon tetras, a quarry cat, a pandagara, love pandagaras, several snails, and they have been together for months. No issues. There you go. There you go. So uh, how you say that's a 10-gallon? It's a good size. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool combination of fish, too. Pandagara is a very cool fish, kind of sticks to the walls of your tank. Looks like a little bumblebee, just a very cute fish. They do, they do put on size. They'll get maybe, I don't know what, two inches, three inches. They can get uh, a little bulky. I found an interesting fact about, uh, about Malawi trouts. Malawi trouts, if you're overfeeding and they don't die of, of, of bloat, which would probably happen first, but if you overfeed your, your cichlids, a trout can actually get a little bit rounded and lose the torpedo shape of the body. So uh, if your trout starts to look a little bit too round, you will find that you are overfeeding. You would think that they would get, uh, that they would get bloat before that would happen. Peas and haps forever. Yes, I am very close to 50,000. I mean, what is it like? Just like one or two? Uh, just a very few. Just a just a few. I, I'm I'm wondering who's going to be number fifty thousand. That'll be kind of interesting. Anthony Udovich. I also have three peppermint platies. He never bothers. Okay. These are some good ideas for some fish to keep keep those give the betta stimulation. You know, you want to give the betta the betta fish some kind of a Something to kind of keep them amused because they, uh, they, they, tend to, they tend to do better when they have that. Brian Park, Ben, do you know if the large African cichlids are a good food source for people? Uh, what do you have in mind, Brian? Uh, <laughs> you can open up a fish market. <laughs> in Africa, people who live around the Rift Lakes, around Lake Malawi, uh, will eat the cichlids. And I've seen big, beautiful, um, you know, Tanganyikan right frontosas on a, you know, on a stick being cooked over a fire and, uh, or a stick with all these beautiful colors on it, all these, you know, all these peacocks on this long, you know, stick being heated over fire. And it's, it's kind of sad, but it's what the, it's, it's a food source for them. They go out there, catch them, and eat them. So uh, the answer is yes. But uh, 
Don't let me catch you fishing in my 300 gallon. <laughs> you can swim in it, but you can't, you can't, uh, you can't fish in it. Uh, Raul Sanchez, I would not, I would unsubscribe and resubscribe, resubscribe, but it wouldn't help. Uh, that's true. And I really want to get there, uh, organically. I, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't troll too hard for subscribers. In some videos, I realize I don't mention it at all, but um, I know some YouTubers out there have bought subscribers. There are services where you could buy clicks and subscriptions. Um, I've never done that. Uh, I've, I've grown over the years what I call organically, and so I prefer to keep doing that and do it legitimately. <laughs> but thank you for the idea. <laughs> Uh, country strong and free in capital letters. Do not eat aquarium fish. Not going to taste. Oh, <laughs> uh, um, Holden Freeman, Holden Freeman. Uh, unfortunately, I've got good news and bad news for you. The, the uh, tank behind me has a beautiful artificial plant made by a company called Elite Cichlids. That's the good news. Uh, the bad news is after the death of, it was a family business, and after mom passed away, um, she was obviously a very important part of the, of the business, the heart and soul of it. Um, the son and, and uh, her husband decided to go ahead and close the shop. They were originally a live florist shop. They decided to go into the making of artificial aquarium plants uh, and were and put together beautiful plants with with nice you know limestone bases at the bottom, made beautiful beautiful stuff. I only wish I had bought more of it, but uh, they are no longer around. <clears throat> I would not recommend uh, uh, Gimsy. I would not recommend keeping koi with cichlids. You have different uh, water parameters. Uh, you know fish as you as you. Notice during the profile fish fish can have a very wide range of pH and temperatures that they can survive at uh, Will they thrive at those temperatures? Will they thrive at those pH levels? I mean uh, I, I just wouldn't do it. I just wouldn't do it plus besides that I think that the cichlids would uh, find the fins on koi fish very very interesting and so you eventually would probably end up with a torn up koi fish now all that being said if i was ever to have goldfish a goldfish variety i love the look of koi i just love the look of koi they do have that long slender torpedo like body and are available in a variety of colors including a beautiful uh, silver platinum color that I just love and I also love the tie, the the tricolor koi a uh, beautiful beautiful fish there might be a variety of koi that don't get ginormous and uh, that wouldn't be a bad you know a bad fish maybe for a for a 125 or something because they are they are absolutely beautiful I just think they're really pretty I'm not real big on the on the real big fancy goldfish the one that looked like someone put a tire pump on them and just blew them up and they just you know they just kind of <laughs> they would have never they would have never survived in 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 if they weren't if they were not genetically modified or or bred to just be this sort of balloon that just sort of floats around they would have never survived because they would have been taken out they're they're just like a little meatball that is float. So any fish could come around and just, oh, gulp, and they're gone. So um, not really big on those kind of fish, even though they are very popular, very popular in the fish-keeping world. So, um, wow, uh, Big Dog 35 has a pH of 4.6. Depends on the fish, I guess, uh, what you're keeping in there. I don't think, uh, I don't think African cichlids would survive in there. That's for sure. A lot of the fish I showed, I showed you in that, in that uh, fish profile video, 
you can do okay anywhere from like you know high six to eight and in the african cichlids as high as eight five but none of them none of them uh at four at four in ph Thank you, Carlos. Uh, says I'm going to be heading for 100,000 subscribers. As my friend used to say, uh, a Jewish friend of mine used to say, from your lips to the ears of God, my friend. <laughs> All right. Frank Vera, I'm thinking on a goldfish tank. There you go. I think goldfish are cool. I think they're very cool. For a lot of us, it was the first fish, right? How many of you went to a fair when you were a kid and came home with a goldfish? I did. You go to a fair, you, 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 you win a prize, right? You toss a coin or you, or you uh, throw a ping pong ball and it stays in the cup and you come home with this goldfish and, you know, they seldom last more than a week or two, but when you're, when you're young and don't know what you're doing, but still, goldfish are really, uh, were the first fish for a lot of folks and kind of a, a gateway fish that uh, for a lot of us led, leads to, you know, Leads to an eventual fish room. Jer Saunders, new fish keeper here on water changes. How do you warm your water before it goes into the tank? Or do you just put it straight from the tap? Great videos, by the way. Thank you, Jer. I use a Python system. I quit the Bucket Brigade years ago because it was making my back too sore. So I go right from the tap. I uh, temperature match, and if it's a big filling, like if I'm putting 100 gallons into the 300 gallon, right? If I, let's say I go down a third, right? It's 100 gallons. So if I'm doing a big filling, halfway through, I'll recheck the temperature to make sure it hasn't shifted. Somebody in the house might be, might be running the dishwasher or a washing machine or something. So I, I, I check the temperature uh, as I'm filling to make sure I don't have a temperature shift. But I do, I have a digital thermometer. I check the temperature at the tap, and then I run, run the hose into the aquarium directly. Now, uh, when you do that, most water conditioners will tell you, you treat for the entire volume of the tank. Even though you're only replacing 10%, 20%, 40%, 60%, 80%, whatever percentage you're replacing, you add conditioner for the full volume of the tank, and... Um, this is why for the bigger tanks, I use uh, Seachem Safe. With a quarter teaspoon of Seachem Safe, I can condition a 300-gallon tank, the tank behind me. So uh, there you go. Gimsy, my fish keep dying with their mouth open. I, I don't know if, what that means. I would need a lot more information before I could comment on that. But, um, Rick, I haven't been practicing. I just, uh, I just channel, I just channel that, that goldfish. <laughs> I just become the goldfish. <laughs> All right, let's see here. So, yeah, we'd have to know a lot more, a lot more, uh, Gimsy, to, to be able to, uh, you know, and ideally, we'd probably have to see a uh, a video of what the heck's going on, and and start with looking at your water parameters. And there's just a lot of moving parts to be able to comment on fish dying. Uh, country strong and free. I don't heat my water during a water change. I actually use colder water to mimic rainfall once a week. Well. There you go. What works for you works for you. Uh, I know that uh, John Hudson over over at KG Tropicals, he when he used to have that uh, fish store uh, back in St. George, uh, the um, or in King, yeah, King George. I mean, he used to live in King George, and he used to fill right from the hose, and that amazed me because that would include water changes during the winter, when you know the water coming in is really cold. But, uh, you know, I guess, you know, the water isn't, isn't temperature matched when it rains on Lake Malawi. Now, that being said, you're, at, you're adding a very small percentage of water to the total volume 
of Lake Malawi. So your chances of changing the temperature of Lake Malawi is slim to none. Whereas in an aquarium, you, you replace 40% of the water with cold water from the tap, you're gonna have a, a temperature shift. That will, I have noticed, and you've probably noticed it too, it will start breeding behavior. A lot of fish breed during the rainy season. Uh, Oscars, they breed during the rainy season. So when there's a shift like that, you'll notice they go into doing their little uh, breeding dance. And even in an all-male tank, they'll start doing dances with each other and shimmying and doing all kinds of stuff. And uh, it, it can get pretty wild. Some fish will get uh, aggressive. The living stone eye will change color, will go all blue, which is a uh, breeding dress. So it can get real interesting real fast. So uh, there you go. If it works for you, keep doing it. Carlos Munez, live long, laugh, uh, live, love, laugh. I saw a nice koi pond in Brooklyn, New York. What happens when it's freezing out? I thought that was awesome. Gave me ideas. Yeah, you know, the, the, those, those, those koi ponds can freeze over. They can, they can freeze right over, and those koi are fine. They, they sort of go into a, a bit of a low metabolism hybrid like sort of a hibernating state and uh, it's kind of amazing actually when you think about it thank you Dennis Dennis Rudell keeps pushing for the subscribers I appreciate that Dennis a lot of the folks on the stream being the uh, being the loyal troopers of the channel that come in for the live stream are probably already subscribed All right, so that puts us at about quarter after 12. So if you have any more questions for me, now is the time to ask them. A big shout out to, um, to the Cichlid Shack for all the fish. 99% of the fish that were featured in that video from the Cichlid Shack in Tempe, Arizona. Check them out at thecichlidshack.com. Also, big shout out to the uh, co-op, the aquarium co-op, for their help with heaters, lights, and plants. So, uh, and a big shout out to you, all of you on the stream, and to my wonderful moderators, the best moderators on YouTube. That's what I call them. So, uh, there you go. So, that being said, let's go ahead and... Uh, let you folks go. You can enjoy your weekend. And I'm, if it, the temperature gets, what are we at right now? Oh, my goodness, we're at 40 degrees. Okay, well, so much for, uh, I, I, I tend to like to ride my bike when it's 60 degrees or warmer. Doesn't look like it's getting up to uh, 60. Well, I'll just kind of hang around, I guess, and do some water changes on the bigger tanks. So I'll do some water changes, and uh, there you go. Checking to see if there are any, any other comments. Thank you, my friends. You are the best. I will see you next week. Watch for my video on what's in the box on that generator. It's a, it's a big monster generator that was sent to me, and I will be talking about that in an upcoming video. And if there are any other topics that you'd like to see discussed in upcoming videos, share them in the chat or in the comment section under the video after it posts to YouTube. All right? So thank you, my friends. You are the best, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.